It's Red at Tennessee Homestead. How the heck are you today? A couple of housekeeping things, really. Got a notice in from the USDA. And if you've received any of these or suspect about some you received, they are having a bunch of seed packages mailed out here in the U.S. Packages of seeds. I don't know what they're labeled. They don't know what all they're labeled. They're coming in out of China. They're bypassing the import inspections. And they've been hitting, uh, going to some group that is dist making distribution. And they're mailing them out to people free. Okay? Free of charge. Here you go. New seeds. <sighs> they're very suspect of these seeds. Uh, right now, our relationship with Red China is not the greatest in the world, number one. And they're concerned about two things. What kind of seeds are these? Uh, are they an invasive weed, uh, extremely invasive weed? Uh, maybe even a GMO weed? But they could also be a uh, seed that has already has insect larvae maybe in it. Things of this nature to where they could introduce a foreign insect into our culture. And these are being mailed out free. Uh, they'll just show up in people's mailboxes is what they found so far. They are doing some research on them, trying to figure out what it, what it, what it all is and where is it coming from exactly. So if you've gotten any of these, what you want to do is contact the USDA and say, listen, I got this packet of seeds mailed to me. I didn't order them. Uh, and they'll tell you where to ship them to, where to mail them to. So, yeah... Yeah, great. Uh, messing with the seed base again. Here we go. But uh, they're coming out of China. <laughs> like like that C word virus wasn't enough. Uh, now they're playing this game. But anyway, if you do receive any of these, contact the USDA. Uh, if you're a seed seller and now and again you'd go, I'd throw a packet or two into my customers of a different seed with you know just that i had come in and ship out to them uh please notify them in advance so that you know the usda doesn't get flooded with all these free seeds and this uh came out uh, the end of the week last week forward is forearmed uh, you might not want to just take plant those things out on your property you have no idea what may be in that okay don't believe what the package says that's what they're trying to tell you. you know, they're labeled as all sorts of things. So there's one. That's something else to worry about, right? <laughs> Why not? You know. Then uh, we have the uh, situation with uh, also uh, the USDA is getting ready to do some change ups with the organic uh, ruling. They want to be able to track organic from farm to your plate. Okay. Because they're finding that things get contaminated along the way, okay? And they're trying to stop that. It's a good thing, okay? Plus, they're really putting some more teeth into the guidelines to hopefully stop some of these people who are, you know, doing things like having chickens in a chicken house and because they get to run around on the floor, they call them free range, things of this nature. Uh, USDA is beginning to go, listen, it's the stuff they get out of the grass that makes an egg organic and makes that chicken organic, not not the fact that they can walk around more. So, yeah, they're toughening up. They're, they're, right now they're requesting comments. If you go out to the USDA site, you can find them uh, under the regulate, regulatory stuff. And if you got to, you know, read over what they're proposing, what they're looking at, throw your two cents in if you'd like. Some things are, they're doing right. This, I, I believe, is very good. Um, you know, because there has been a lot of cheating in the area of organic. Uh, a lot of nonsense. So they're trying to kind of clean that up just a little bit. So that'll help out organic growers. But they're finding that a lot of the organic food is getting contaminated as it go, moves through the process, intermixed with other uh, non-organic non product, stuff of this nature. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to get it straightened up. 
So they, they're wanting to put a system in place that tracks it from the time that seed went into the ground to the time it landed on your plate. Uh, that pretty much covers the U.S. duh stuff. <laughs> yeah, craziness. Uh, well, we're into campaign mode out there. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, I like that. Let's get this over and done with. This mail-in voting thing really concerns me. They're already finding... Uh, a lot of ballots are going out that should not be going out. That allows for fraud. Uh, you know. Yeah, I just, you know, I just want a clean election. Win, lose, or draw, just give us a clean election. And it doesn't look like they're, you know, the Democrats are doing everything in their power to make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, folks. They have never done this sort of stuff for the common flu, and our death rates aren't much higher on COVID than it is for common flu. I can see people, because it is harder on people that have heart attack, you know, bad hearts, things of this nature, um, cancers, diabetes, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Understand that. Weakened immune systems. Uh, which, by the way, I, I've been looking at some of this stuff, and you know, there are a lot of drugs out there, and this is something people ought to be talking to doctors about. Uh, there are a lot of drugs out there, you see the ads, you know, and they warn you that it weakens your immune system. Clears up your skin, but it weakens your immune system. You might want to find out if you're on any of those things, okay? Because in the midst and the middle of a quote-unquote pandemic, Having a weakened immune system is probably not the brightest thing you could do. And maybe you ought to go for a few uh, more red spots on your skin and survive if you come down with this stuff. A lot of that, I'm sure the rest of you have seen it. All these commercials where I listen to the side of I, That's my favorite part of the pharmaceutical commercials is listening to the side effects. Okay, because usually they're worse than what they're trying to fix for you. So... <laughs> Yeah, seriously, it's like, okay, you know, and including death, but it'll clear up your skin. Really? <laughs> oh, you'll be the best looking corpse in the morgue. All right, I, I can see that. Great. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah that, that's, uh, it, it's kind of nuts. So you might want to look through your prescription drugs if you're taking prescription drugs. And find out which ones which ones of these knocks down my immune system. Uh, could be could be a problem and uh, an ongoing problem. Really, a weakened immune system even makes you uh, more vulnerable to the common cold and flus. All right, but let's get back to that election. But th this isn't much worse than the common flu. Really isn't a little bit high. I mean, it, it it adds up to this pandemic is like a bad flu. We've had worse in this country, a lot worse. We've had flus circulate through this country that uh, you know has taken out uh, a couple hundred thousand people. The flu. Did we shut things down? No. Was everybody running around in masks? No. <laughs> Did we all survive? Most of us? Yeah. yeah. Did you get herd immunity and kind of move on through that flu string? Yeah. All right. Here again, hospital beds. Keep watching that because it's going to get worse. Okay. Um, yeah. Because this, if they get this Medicare for all, uh, according to the uh, hospital associations, you're probably going to lose about another 150 to 200,000 hospital beds, if not more, which is going to take you down into a very low range for available hospital beds. Here again, government meddling in healthcare. Government needs to get out of the healthcare business. All right. Otherwise, you're going to end up with something like Italy's. Okay. Where, you know, if they get a bad cold season going, they got people sleeping in the halls. No, you don't want that, okay? Uh, really, I have problems with this government health care. Oh, everybody's insured. Wait, wait, stop. Okay, if you were poor, okay, my, all states had Medicaid. 
If you're old, you got Medicare. All right. And if you're working for a living, bingo. You have regular health insurance bought through companies, just normally driven competitive businesses. Can the government sit in and say, yes, if you're going to sell insurance in our country, you are going to cover pre-existing diseases? Yeah, that's fair to say. All right. It'll cause the rates to be a little bit higher, but fair to say. Let's get government out of our health care system. We out. This started back in the 60s, and our health care prices went through the roof. Our service got worse. It's not been a win-win for the average patient. It, it was amazing. Uh, when, I, when I had to get my hips replaced, okay, there was a marked difference, and I went in to get one hip done. They, they wouldn't do them both at the same time. At least my surgery wouldn't. It's a new. Uh, put one in, recover, put the other one in, which was no big deal. I had uh, a pretty good insurance uh, policy through the company I was with. And I mean, I did, my paychecks kept coming from the company. Okay. They built the insurance company for it. They kept paying me. So I was in no rush, but I, I did want to get back to work because I had a pretty responsible position. The first one I went to, when I had my first one done, they were just trying to finalize and, and get instituted Obamacare. Man, I'll tell you what, I got I got a pair of gym shorts and a t-shirt uh, from them. When I came out, man, about the time I opened my eyes, you know, they had somebody down there from physical therapy, and they wanted me up, walking, moving, going, let's get, the, you know, because that is how you heal fast and how it doesn't cause you problems later on down the road. Well, it takes about 90 days to totally get through all your physical therapy and recover. Once I recovered on the one, they sent me in for the other. Now Obamacare's in full effect. I The anesthesia that they used on me was something entirely different. I mean, the first stuff they used, they gave me a shot, and I don't remember anything from there until I woke up in my room. This one... I was still wide awake when they wheeled me down there to the operating room. They had to give me something additional. I laid in a recovery room because they didn't have any beds available, even though this was a scheduled surgery. They didn't have any beds available, and I laid in a recovery room for 12 stinking hours. Well, guess what? They wouldn't give you any food or water. So now you've went 36 hours or more with nothing to drink and nothing to eat. Yeah, I was getting cranky. And the more awake I became, the less they liked me. Took me up to the same floor, same nurses, same everything. It was there for their orthopedic surgery ward. They did not want me to get up out of bed at all. I don't know. Uh -uh. I called my ex-wife. I'd had my walker from the last time I'd had surgery. I told her, you bring my walker and stuff. They wouldn't give me a walker. They wouldn't give me nothing. I kept ringing the button just to get to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And nobody came. I had no way to get up and get around. So I used my little stand thing. And I went over to the doorway where the nurses come in and out. And I took my whiz. And then I went back to bed. And then when I finally kept pressing the button and they came in, I finally told them, yeah, clean that up. I was ticked. <laughs> and if a nurse had been standing there, I'd have probably watered her shoes. I was ticked. Next day, I got my walker. They raised cane with me, folks, for getting up and walking. No, you got to stay in your bed. I told them there's not anybody on this floor big enough to put me back to bed. Get out of my way. Because I knew. My doctor had told me, you know, you really got serious with your physical therapy and you really pushed hard and, man, you healed up faster than we expected you to. Yeah, I'd learned that from my physical therapist. So I knew what was good for that hip. They weren't letting me do it anymore. I saw a physical therapist once where with the other hip, Three months prior, I saw a physical therapist three and four times a day. You don't think it hits your health care? 
guess again. And by the way, because of the couple of days it took me to get up and be able to get up and move around, this one hip, the second hip I had done, that's the one that always causes me problems. Yeah. The other one? Don't know a thing. Get government out of your health care. Okay. But through all this, what I was get driving at is if you're young and you're healthy, you know, up into your 50s and early 60s, this is not as bad as the average flu on you. Quit all this nonsense because this mail-in stuff, they've already seen mailing them out where it's, it's a joke where they're sending five and six ballots for different people to the same house. And, you know, the records are not kept well. They're not kept well at all. So when you look at the voter registrations are not up to date, they're sending out bulks of these things, which is, makes it ripe for fraud. You can have somebody sitting there going, oh, good, I got 10 ballots sent to me. I'll fill them all out and mail them back in. Okay, see the problem there? That's where it's going to fall apart. I can guarantee you, if the Democrats come to power, they'll get rid of the mail-in ballots because they would want somebody doing it to them. BS on the mail-in ballots. Get off your butt and get to the polls. If you're, like I said, high risk for uh, a fatality rates of COVID, then stay at home, but use the absentee ballot system. We're getting ready to screw a bunch of stuff up because of nonsense. Because of nonsense. And then we need to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with our government. Donald Trump's done a good job as far as building the economy and so forth. But it's time to start leaning on our senators and our representatives, telling them we want you guys to start bringing this shrinking this government back down into the constraints of the Constitution, and let's get a bunch of these stupid laws of yours off the books. Starting with that cotton pick and Obamacare. Let's get something that works. The old health care system worked better than this one does. What the government, how, why they got in the middle of it is because they realized that they could, if they took control of the healthcare system, they could squeeze the hospitals by the throat and cut their costs down so that they didn't have to spend as much money. So let's get them out of it all together. See, so, now, if they're on Medicare or Medicaid, you send them to a military hospital, okay? You already have those up and running. Problem solved. Keep now the private hospitals. Let the private hospitals and the private doctors take care of the private citizens that has private insurance. Start thinking like Americans. Don't let the government think for you. Because so far, they've got a pretty good running record of failing miserably. Anyway, I'm not going to get off too deep politics. It's a Monday and I'm really trying to avoid it this week. <laughs> Love you guys. Appreciate you. Talk to you later.